Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to Dr. Homebrew. It's the cider show, folks, something that uh, I've prayed for for years, and I don't think we've ever really done it, uh, where we have all cider all the time. Hot cider action. Well, it's, it's not hot, but it's, um, hello, you know, steamy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But we have all ciders uh, made by one homebrewer, one dude, Bill. Bill, welcome to Dr. Homebrew, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, appreciate it, man. You sent uh, a truck ton of cider. I think that's the technical term for it. It's metric, though. I don't know the conversion. Yeah, well, mm. we can't really know for sure. You know, I don't have a cider kiss. That's like an abacus. Um, what do we have? We have like five. Was it five, Bill? How many did you send? How many? Different I sent types four. Of cider? I sent. I sent four New World ciders, and you know, one of the things I really wanted to see is you guys tell me which one's the best out of them. Because okay. one of the problems, I do a lot of homebrew competitions, but what you can't do is submit a lot of times the same category and get, oh. you know, so, so I only can submit one thing. So I want to know which one of mine is better, you know, you know, out of it. So that was kind of the idea. And the new world okay. cider is a very basic thing. So it's not, it's really just about me changing small things in the process. I love this. I love the fine tuning. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to help you fine tune it. Okay. I love it. And we don't know shit about cider. So Horendu, you're back. Welcome back, my friend. Oh, thanks for having me back. Yay. <laughs> Thank God you're here. Yeah. To help us, uh, Shark, come up a little bit, please. Uh, you're going to help us guide us. You're going to guide us. You're going to take us by the hand. You're going to light the torch and uh, guide us through the tunnel that is uh, cider. I think. Sort of like a Lord I'll of the Rings. I'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's your cider judge pin, Herendu? You're not wearing it right now. I'm not wearing any of my pins today. Oh, he's going no. to be our guide on the jungle cruise of cider. <laughs> That's right. I just, uh, I just made, made, uh, I made me judge thanks uh, in part to Herendu and his wonderful class. Uh, but I'm waiting for him to do another cider class so I can get in that side of things too. So, or maybe take if Dave Tech come off or offers that or somebody. But yeah. Cooper, yeah, Tecum, you just really like working for free. Yeah, it's you're, fun. <laughs> you're uh, you're you're broadening your CV so you can do more work than not get paid for it. Yeah, well, I've I've done meads for a long time, but early in my judging career, I didn't want to. I almost didn't want to take the mead judge exam because I didn't want to get stuck because there were so few mead judges for a long time. I didn't want to get stuck judging mead at every competition I went to. So I intentionally kind of, I, I told Dave Tech, oh yeah, I'll take your exam, and then I didn't do it, didn't study it. Oh, oh, I'll do, I'll do your exam, David. And then, then Herendu comes up. He's like, you're taking this exam, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but does, doesn't everyone just want to judge meads all the time? I mean, that's like, even, even people who are not meat judges, they always say, I want to judge meat. I want to judge meat. <laughs> they are nice to judge. And yeah, I got to judge uh, a best of show at uh, NHC one time. And that was a blast. Uh, I did that with, with Dennis Mitchell. And, and we so wow. I, I pretty well, I mean, I, I did know Meads and I, I felt confident uh, working with him and, and, and that we did the, the entrance right there. Uh, but yeah, that, that, it is fun judging Meads for sure. Yeah, but I guess. Now we're, yeah, I don't know. So. I mean, you got like, how many Meads do you have in a flight typically? I don't know why we're talking about Meads as a cider show, but yeah. let's just do it. <laughs> well, you know, you should know that Bill also does awesome Meads. So okay, well then it's relevant. <laughs> All right, I love stumbling into relevancy. He just, he just, <laughs> he just won some medals at uh, uh, Mayfair, right? With your Meads, uh, Bill. Congratulations! Yeah, I won oh. a couple of ciders and uh, uh, Mead uh, medals at Mayfair. Nice job, Bill. Well done. Good work, man. Good work. Uh, well, look, let's let's jump into cider making. But before we do, of course, we want to thank our sponsor of this show, Five Star Chemicals. You can go to fivestarchemicals.com right now and learn about the best way to clean and sanitize your home brewing equipment, which is using Five Star Chemicals. PBW, Star San, get the Sandy Clean if you want. Got a whole bunch of products on the market to look forward to using in your brewery. And if you want a discount on PBW or if you want to test out products from Five Star before they're even on the market, Join the Five Star Homebrew Club program. It's a brand new thing they got going on. They got a homebrew club program. It's easy and it's free. Join the Five Star Homebrew Club program now at fivestarchemicals.com. You sign up, you get a little email every now and then, and then you get a little discount here and there. They float you a couple things. Hey, try this out. Try this out. Try this out. You give them feedback. It's a win-win. I think I need to get our, our officership to sign up for that. I mentioned it a long time ago, and then I don't think we ever did it. But 
I think it does should. sound sound like a good thing. I'm yeah, gonna text have, text our president yeah. right now. Stand Mon by. Monthly educational seminars, free stuff, whole bunch of stuff. So check it out. Five star chemicals. Thank you, five star, for supporting this show. I appreciate it. All right. Bill, you look like I'm looking at your Zoom background. You look like you have a couple small fermenters behind you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Are you a professional brewer or are you just like taking over a tap room? Oh, this is a, one of those just blurry uh, Zoom backgrounds I have in okay. here. Uh, mainly so you don't see how messy my office really is. Dude, um, it's, it's at the uh, proper scale where you could you it, you could just be at a brewery and then it's it, you just blurred out the actual background. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, and no, oh, JP, that's not an actual tree behind me either. So just I know. You're Unless like you're angle, Cooper. That's what Unless I'm saying. Unless you're in Australia and it's fall there. Yeah. <laughs> you're at the wrong angle. Right. Bill's at the right angle. All right, Bill. Well, how long have you been making cider, man? Uh, I've been making ciders for about 10 years, but mainly I always consider myself a brewer. Uh, started doing ciders and meats because my wife doesn't like beer. So, um, and occasionally I would, you know, make a couple for her, but still made a lot of beer. When I did competitions, I would submit to our local competition, and normally I would do well with the ciders and meats because they age better. Typically, I just submit the beer I had, which was two months old, and mm. never really did very good at it. Um, with COVID, uh, <laughs> I started doing a lot more meads and ciders because no one was coming over drinking my beer and uh, started doing a lot more experimenting with it and just really enjoying the process of uh, doing it. And Last year, I went heavy into the homebrewing competition circuits, and uh, this year again, just trying to get, perfect the recipes and just trying different things. Okay, so you're one of the people who, like me, who took up a new hobby, a new skill in the lockdown and the COVID, and uh, you're turning it to basically just making more alcohol, which I appreciate. I went to like making bread, but uh, <laughs> you just you you know you're on the alcohol path, and I appreciate that. And if the, yeah, the beard is a COVID project as well, too. You got me beat. Got, I was clean shaven before the pandemic myself, but uh, yeah. Well, I guess I trim it too much, but. Well, you're, the you're wife doing... signed off on it. So that was the important part. Yeah, yeah. same here. You know, <laughs> if the wife signs off, you're good. Well, yeah, and you have to, because she's the one who looks at you. That's what I tell my wife. I'm like, if you don't like my face here, if my beard's too long, just tell me. She goes, well, I don't care. You like it. I'm like, yeah, but I don't look at myself. You have to look at me. <laughs> Well, I'm also a big guy and it hides my five chins. Ah. <laughs> oh, it's smart. not necessarily that bad, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, look, man, pandemic has hurt us in different ways. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. So you were saying that you have done a New World Cider. Let's talk about what New World Cider is, if you wouldn't mind schooling us a little bit. <laughs> a New World is, uh, shoot, uh, is just the more modern version of the cider that you get at stores. It's uh, mm -hmm. just very basic uh, cider. It's no, not, not, nothing special, no extra flavors, you know, juice, yeast, maybe a little additional sugar in it. And that's it. Simple, easy, also think, complicated. Yeah. I think the main thing that uh, new world cider uh, is supposed to be categorized as is more or less the world new world is the <clears throat> American uh, apples, uh, more or less not so tannic, not so sharp as uh, 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 English and French and other ciders, uh, mm -hmm. Spanish and others. So yeah, it's, it's also varietal with respect to uh, more or less uh, apples that you would find in America kind of in the new oh. world. <clears throat> new world cider. Right. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay. I love it. Well, Harindu, how long have you been judging ciders? How long have you been doing this? Maybe three years. I mean, yeah, I think I got uh, cider, <clears throat> BJCP cider program literally kind of just got started maybe two, two or three years ago. Um, I took the exam at the first chance I got, which was uh, just before COVID hit, I think 2020 Feb. So officially I'm judging cider since uh, two years only. Uh, but yeah. nice. Okay, <clears throat> perfect. And you have some of Bill Ciders. Yes, I have one bottle each of all four. Oh, yeah. Well, let's crack and one we, open. Which one should we start with? A? I I'm think already we should on start a. with A, yeah. A, okay. A. So, Cooper, let's go. Let's start with you, man. All right. Let me crack this cider and pour a little bit for myself here. Uh, the uh, So, the carbonation level in all of these was declared as petulant, and the sweetness level is uh, medium. 
So a little different from the the mead categories, uh, where you can, you know a medium would be a semi sweet. Uh, the sweetness can be declared as dry, semi dry, medium, semi sweet, or sweet. So you can go all you know all over the place with these things and uh, clear that is pick a level that that works for you. So um, you can see my face right through it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and this center, it's a nice medium gold color uh, with a brilliant clarity. Uh, had a, you know, pours a, a medium white head that rises up upon pouring uh, and diminishes very quickly after, as expected. I don't know, you're not really supposed to come in on head retention or anything like that. It doesn't really have that, <laughs> but it's a cider. So uh, I, I do see many little pinpoint bubbles rising uh, throughout. Uh, so it does look like it is uh, uh, petulant as declared. I kind of had to give it full points for appearance. It's a really, really pretty cider. Uh, bouquet aroma, um, a just a light, clean apple aroma with a, a very clean fermentation profile, no off aromas, uh, just lightly fruity apple pear type esters, uh, pleasant and inviting. Uh, there's no oakiness or, or harshness in the nose. Uh, just a good level of apple, kind of medium low, and you know, not getting a whole lot else, but it, it smells fresh and, and clean. Uh, getting into the flavor. Uh, pleasing, lightly sweet apple up front. The acidity level seems medium low, and it's not fighting with the fruit, uh, rather just accenting it. It is somewhat persistent, but uh, I like that. Uh, I would say medium sweetness is right for this. It, it does taste medium, lingers on the tongue for a bit and then, then recedes, but not to dry. Uh, it has a, a lingering clean apple, uh, faint tannins, and uh, yes, a light uh, petulance to it uh, to drive drive a little bit of those flavors, but not crazy. <laughs> not petulance. Um, woo yeah. Okay. I've always, um, I've always said petulant. Petulant, yeah. And I don't think that's it. I think I was wrong. I think I've been wrong before. Well, there's a there, petulance, like a, a petulant child, who, you, know, <laughs> right. you know, we might have one of those around here. No, but, yeah, you never know. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's a different <laughs> word with a different spelling with a <laughs> U, U in it or something. But that's anyway. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, light, light petulance drives a little bit of flavor there. The alcohol is, uh, seems medium low. It's not really uh, uh, sharp or harsh at all. It's just really smooth, medium bodied and, and nice. Um, I gave it yeah, eight out of 10 for flavor. And uh, yeah, anyway, so going on to overall impression, uh, obviously very cleanly fermented uh, New World cider, pleasant balance of the various elements and no discernible flaws. Um, as I continue to sip, I feel like I get just a touch more alcohol, like maybe a light bit of warming in the in the lower throat as it kind of warms up but still pleasant and um keeps me wanting another sip i, I just like the way the fresh uh apple quality um you know plays off the other elements there um it's quite fresh smelling and tasting um i really wouldn't change the apple blend here i like the the kind of rich color of this one um so i landed at a 41 on this one um, I think it's a uh, excellent new world cider. All right. Very good. Brian Shar. We'll go you. And then, and then Harindu will come back clean up and tell you guys why you're both wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of a good, uh, uh, judging sandwich there. Cause you have so, like too. Brian and Harindu knows some stuff about stuff and I don't know shit. So <laughs> that just kind of lets you get me, my, my nonsense out of the way before we uh, get on to some, some real stuff. Sure. So, uh, Bill, you've probably heard the show once or twice. Uh, I have to ask you, are you in a homebrew or a home cider club? Yeah, so I'm part of uh, two homebrew clubs here in the Atlanta area. And I actually oh, wow. recently started a meat and cider club um, outside of that, which pulls members from both those clubs in, but also gets people who are not into the beer scene as much. And, you know, that's one of the things I wanted to do. I wanted to try more meads. I want to try more ciders from people. And I just had to get a, start a group doing that. So that's really just your secret plan to have people bring you meat and cider. That's a good plan. That's our plan. <laughs> so this this is your this is your time to plug your uh, plug your meat and cider club. How would what's it called and how would people find out about it? It's um, meat and ciders makers and and makers and tasters, and it's uh, North Georgia area is what it's called. It's a Facebook group. 
Nice. Um, yeah. and Actually, what's, what's, all... that, what's that called again? Mead and cider? Mead and cider, makers and tasters. So okay. I even, you know, we, even if people aren't making it, I want people who are interested in it. You know, they'll, they'll buy commercial stuff, bring it too, which is good. Uh, if they travel, it's great. I get some other meads I haven't had before. Nice. So, um, and uh, we've been real lucky. Uh, Peach State was here, uh, and I got uh, someone brought all the leftover meads from Peach State and ciders from there. And also, I got a whole bunch of from Domer's Cup from Savannah for meads and things too. Wow. So, uh, we've been going through those as a group and just, you know, learning about it and some wonderful ones in there uh, somewhere I've competed in. I'm like, well, how did this one not beat me on things, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm also in the process of setting up a, a, a homebrew competition here in North Georgia. Uh, it's not going to do meats and ciders our first run because uh, we're trying to keep what? it simple. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm organizing what's called the North Georgia homebrew competition. Um, and it, we actually just uh, started uh, the signing up for judges today. Uh, and, entry will start on july 1st and it's just going to be uh category 1 to 26 we're trying to keep it simple um work out the kinks and try to get more interest in getting more bjcp judges because there's obviously a sh i know in the atlanta area there is but even this last year watching homebrew competitions uh we really need to try to get more people who are knowing their stuff who are willing to judge because i think there is a sh shortage in many areas you got a website yeah. for that comp yeah it's north ga homebrew.com. Cool. Very good. You hear that, everybody? If you're in the area, sign up. Yeah. Or I guess if you're not, you just ship your entries. Uh, <laughs> all right, Char, let's go. All right. Because nothing's better than shipping something perishable to Georgia at the end of June. It's not going to get hot or anything on the way. Hey, that's man. <laughs> that's not you, what the South hey, is like in, in the summer. Can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I spent a lot of my youth in Tennessee, Bill. So that's kind of I, I know that honestly, but that's just kind of the way it is. Uh, I liked the cider a lot. I don't know a lot about cider. Uh, so I, you know, I may be a grandmaster beer judge. So at least I know the framework for kind of how to break a beverage down and, and deal with that. But even that's a little bit different on the cider score sheet, right? It's, it's a different score sheet than the beer score sheet. So it takes a little bit of time for a novice decider like myself to kind of figure that out, but it's, it's straightforward. Uh, appearance, uh, I don't really have anything to add from what Brian uh, had said. It did have that low petulant carbonation. Uh, it's visible to the eye and, and uh, visible to eye and tongue. I hadn't been drinking before I, I wrote that, but I mean, I'm not sure if something's visible to my tongue. I mean, I'm not like a superhero or something, but even if I had a superpower, it wouldn't be tongue vision. So uh, nonetheless, it's detectable with looking at it and, and tasting it. Six out of six uh, aroma. You know, I, I did the reading of the intro to cider judging uh, on the BJCP website before this so that I could try to at least attempt to do your, your, your cider some justice. Uh, and as it points out, low aroma is kind of okay for cider in general. It doesn't have to be you know, a hazy IPA or a sour beer where stuff's just leaping out of the glass into your nose. And that's, this does, that's what this beer, this, this cider is, it's low aroma. It's okay for style. I get low apple kind of hints of maybe honey or a caramelized uh, pie apple, like maybe after it's been baked, just a little bit of that. No off aromas, thought it was very pleasant, uh, eight out of 10. <clears throat> Flavor, my initial impression was a uh, uh, apple character and low sweetness, uh, mid sort of medium low acidity is noticeable. There is a slight tannin slash astringent to balance. Uh, body is medium, no warming. Uh, finish is uh, fairly quick and fairly smooth. Uh, so I, nothing, nothing bad about it. And a lot of things that I thought were good about it. So 18 out of 24. Overall impression, I gave it a seven out of 10 for a total of 39. Uh, overall, I like this cider very much. Uh, I didn't notice off flavors or off aromas. It's very easy to drink. Uh, and it might be a little too easy to drink because I was, by the time I finished all four of these, I didn't feel like I was tipsy. And then I stood <laughs> up and I'm like, I think I should have some dinner now. I think I'm a little tipsy. Uh, so that's kind of that very sneaky uh, warming that you don't realize it's, it's warming. Uh, it maybe has a little too much body that was my note but i upon going back and drinking this i don't think that's the case i 
ignore that. That was stupid. Uh, and the finish goes away pretty quickly, but that's again, fine for a cider. Uh, it's a 39. I would, I'm going to end up drinking this whole bottle, you know, probably, or most of this whole bottle. I think it's really great. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what Herendu has to say about it. Yeah. Same Herendu, go for it. <clears throat> okay. So I think this was quite interesting. Actually, you covered some of my points, Brian, uh, Shar, that is. <laughs> okay. Are you serious? Uh, really? I did. Yeah, yeah, you did. I, I so, I mean, I, I, so first of all, I, I, kind of didn't get two bottles. So I, I, I had only one bottle. So we lost her into he's frozen. We'll wait for him to come back. Yeah. We can take this out in post. Sure. Okay. He's back. That would have been some of the best feedback I would have ever had. <laughs> <laughs> he went mute. Yeah, he loved it so I much. Think about it. So now he's going to change my. Uh, you start from the top, Rendu. You froze right when you were right when you started talking. Oh my god. Okay. Am I good now? You're good now. <laughs> okay. So, sorry about that. Uh, so as I was telling that Brian Shar kind of covered a couple of main points that I was going to say. Uh, and I was telling that I kind of cheated because I had only one bottle. So I opened up uh, all four bottles only 20 minutes before the show, 20, 30 minutes, and tasted a little bit of each and wrote very short notes. So I don't have a complete score sheet like uh, these guys have filled out. Uh, so my main uh, comment was, this is actually a very good, again, appearance is awesome. I mean, the, 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 you know, golden color clarity is very inviting to drink. Aroma is very nice. Um, I got a little bit of uh, uh, apple skin in the aroma, mild spice, uh, very inviting, slight socks, but not, I, I scored this 35, by the way. So 30, so on, on a range, I'll say 33 to 37 is what I will score this as. Uh, so the two things that, uh, uh, Brian Shark uh, covered. One, I got a little bit of honey flavor in the in the flavor part of it, and I got a medium plus body. Um, that kind of uh, slightly kind of made me think that this is uh, and that and the bit petulant uh, carbonation and uh, sweetness that it has. I thought that this would have benefited a lot more from. Uh, higher acidity uh, to balance out that sweetness and uh, and like I said, somewhat uh, uh, almost uh, artificial uh, sweetness, uh, honey-like sweetness that I get from it. Uh, um, I, I'm maybe I should ask you. I mean, is this back sweetened in any way? <clears throat> yeah, it is slightly back sweetened. And actually, okay. I'll go okay. more over all the recipes when we're finished with all four of them. So I'll tell you guys what the differences are. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. So yeah, my main comment would be that you know, uh, slightly slightly more acidity acidity would help. Maybe even slightly more carbonation will bring that carbonic bite that will balance out the sweetness a little bit. But uh, overall, it's very enjoyable drinking. You know, easy drinking. Actually, all four of yours were very easy drinking and with no major flaws. And appearance wise, also they're all pretty good. So you you'll probably see a pattern in my comments. Again, it's a perception of one person kind of, and maybe not just perception, but also personal likes and uh, preferences of one person, which could happen in an, any uh, judging competition. So uh, I'll kind of, we'll, we'll talk about the others as we could get there. <laughs> All right, what did you, uh, what did you score at Harindu? I scored it at 35, but on a range, I would give like 33, 37. Okay. So still, I think pretty close to the other two. I'm, I'm not way far off. Yeah, for sure. What's the alcohol on this bill? It's a little bit over six. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You know what? Just as my, you know, obviously I'm, I don't really do <laughs> notes, but uh, yeah, I opened it and I took a sip while uh, Cooper was talking and I was like, damn, I kind of want, I, I want, I don't want to drink all four bottles, but I think I might have to finish all four bottles. Like the, it's mm. very, very easy drinking, very good. And as it opens up, you know, a lot of what everyone was saying, it has a, a, a big body. It is sort of that like almost cooked honey, uh, the apple skin, the apple aroma is, is very much present. Yeah, it's, it's excellent. It's a great, it's a great cider. 
Like apple pie without all the spices. Yeah. Maybe a little spice. That, yeah, but not. Yeah, it was kind of, kind of starting to move the dial in that direction. And I'm glad to hear it was 6% because I didn't notice warming. And I thought, oh, my God, am I physically broken? Or is this a low, <laughs> lower alcohol beer or a cider? And it was lower alcohol. So I appreciate that information. I would probably, I would probably go. I would be torn between like a 39 and a 40 on that. It's very good. I love ciders. And uh, that's it's complex enough and it's meaty enough. There's enough there's enough body there to like you know some ciders can be watery and thin and whatever. Yeah. And I think what a lot of people think of when they think of ciders, especially commercial ciders. Uh, but this is like a more elevated, you know, it's more challenging. You know, yeah, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's great. It's, it's not not uh, yeah not a pedestrian uh, cider. Not your not your grandfather's cider. That's right. All right, Cooper. Let's do B. Okay, cider B. cider B is the red cap. Slightly different. For those of you following along on Facebook. Different color for sure. Interesting. And it's another New World Cider uh, with the same declared uh, attributes, petulant and medium sweetness. Um, and this one, it, my bottle, first bottle had a slightly high fill, but not, not too bad. It had a nice hiss upon opening. Uh, this one, I didn't check the fill, but it seems fine. Uh, appearance wise, it's a pale yellow. I'm so used to putting my nose in this first. With ciders, you have to do the appearance first. Like, okay, this is a it's a very pale yellow, extremely clear cider. Pours with a flourish of bubbles, crackling and fading soon after. Uh, a few very fine bubbles are a, rising. A flourish of bubbles, Brian. Just a little, whoosh, yeah. A flourish of bubbles, crackling then fading soon after. Uh, it continues to have a few very fine bubbles rising through the glass meets the petulant description um six out of six for appearance in the nose it's got a lightly appley quality i'm kind of digging to get the character um it's a bit light overall to me uh, very clean fermentation though yeast profile um that kind of you know it's just a clean yeast profile uh not a super characterful yeast uh coming in uh, uh, still, you know, it's maybe slightly duller in some ways, but it's still inviting and smells like something I'll want to drink that might be refreshing. Um, getting into the flavor. This one to me comes across as um, semi-dry in the finish. Um, it's, there's not a whole lot of sweetness here. It's a light, clean apple, uh, like a tasty and not very challenging eating variety, just a red delicious or something. This is okay for the style. It doesn't have to be a super, you know, it, you, you, it will tend to lean towards uh, maybe less characterful apples than of course, like like we said, an English cider or a French cider. Um, so that's okay for style. It's, it's not a really a negative comment. It's just kind of, okay. You know, you can use a different variety of apples, different blend in each cider you make. And, uh, you know, when you're making a new world, world cider, you can blend in um, something a little more interesting to give it a little bit of an edge if you want to have it have it stand out uh, in one way or another. But uh, yeah, that'd be interesting to know what the apple is in this one in particular, um, or apples. <laughs> Alcohol is light, unassuming. Um, I, I would say it's almost bordering on kind of watery but not 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 super watery it's a, kind of a, a medium light finish um there is a faintly tart acidity with a low tannin to offer a bit of balance uh if you went crazy with any of those i think would throw this way off balance because there's not a whole lot else there um it's nice that it doesn't overpower that the balance of that just light faint apple note so that stays and, and stays throughout pretty much you still get apple in the the aftertaste nice little clean uh note um it's a it's a light bodied and, and and refreshing cider but maybe a little bit muted to me as it warms you get a little more character out of it overall um it's a clean cider leaning more toward the lighter and drier slightly less acidic end of the style um it's amazingly light and delicate with no flaws I and mean, if you did have any flaws they'd be standing out like a sore thumb in this one but uh you know, just not as much as hope to kind of keep my attention as well as I might like. Uh, just a bit more sweetness could uh, perk it up and a little bit of acid uh, increased. But don't go crazy with those because, again, the apple character is really, really light. You could 
kind of play with varieties and, and increase that a little bit. But again, don't go too wild adjusting these things. It's, it's pretty nice where it is. Um, could also use, you know, even get away with a hint more alcohol there. I don't know if this one's lighter than the last one or not, but um, it might get you up to that kind of medium body that I would desire uh, for the, for the style here. Uh, maybe, or declare it as a drier cider, do, you know, semi-dry. Uh, it, it could be pushing a little bit towards the medium. It's, it's, I don't know, it's hard to say, but, um, you know, by the numbers, it might be medium, but um, to me, I'm, I'm perceiving it as a little, little uh, lighter than that. So um, I did give it a 36 overall. I think it's a very, you know, high end of very good, um, generally within the, the style you want, just a little, not really flaws or anything, but just kind of some balance, uh, balance um, issues or things you could do to maybe make it just a little bit better. So I hope that helps. And uh, I'll move on to Brian Shar. All right, Shar, let's do it. All right. Yeah, I uh, largely echo what uh, Cooper said. Uh, appearance for this one, uh, very pale gold, almost straw, uh, crystal clear. Uh, it's there's a noticeable it, it's faded because I, I poured this like an hour ago and it's come up to room temperature or closer to room temperature uh, but there was a noticeable low head and noticeable carbonation that went I think to my mind well beyond pedalant so I knocked off a point for that gave it five out of six uh, the aroma is really where I I, I have to I, I don't have anything to add to what Cooper said it was very low in general, and I had a hard time getting much of anything out of it. I wondered for a second if I had COVID because I couldn't really smell much of anything. Uh, <laughs> and thankfully that I smelled something and thought, oh God, no COVID for me. Uh, no, there's no off aromas. You know, it's a low apple aroma. I gave it a seven out of 10. Low, low is fine. And what was there was, was good. Uh, flavor, uh, my initial impression was uh, low apple and then a little bit of lemon flavor, not tartness, but like a, like a lemon, like a citrus flavor, but without the sour. Mm. Uh, there was some mm. a, a medium low acidity. Uh, sweetness was in the background. I think the, uh, the, uh, the acidity is a little bit more toward the balance, a little bit more toward the acidity in this one. Uh, no warming, uh, low body. Uh, the aftertaste I thought was a little sharp, but nothing off or bad. It just seemed a little... It wasn't quite as smooth as the, the, the A cider. So I gave it 14 for flavor. Overall impression, six out of 10 for a total of 32, which is still very good. Uh, it's a very easy drinking cider that I, I enjoyed, but the uh, that lemon citrus kind of struck me as a little bit out of place. And I wanted just a little bit more in terms of, of, of aroma. So that was my, my two cents. Okay, gotcha. I follow that, I follow that. Harindu, set the boy straight. All right, and I hope my connection stays stable. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, so, okay, so this is actually quite interesting. Uh, I kind of agree that, you know, this, as far as appearance, it is, uh, again, nice, clear, petulant uh, bubbles, uh, very inviting. Um, it definitely is closer to the straw color, kind of, you know, compared to the first one, which was more of a golden color. Um, I did get aroma, by the way. I floral, slightly tannic aroma, even a light alcohol in the back. I got little spice, like cinnamon-like spice in the aroma, which was mm. quite interesting. Uh, Flavor-wise, I thought this was a little more balanced than the previous one, given it has a little more tannic and a little more ac acidic uh, notes to it. So again, like in you know, personal preferences, I kind of like the sweetness to be balanced by um, acidity somewhat, even in a novel cider. Uh, so uh, exactly what the Brian Shard said, like it was a little sharp, but for me, it is it makes it more pleasant overall because it kind of uh, takes that uh, sweetness away a little bit. Um, I got perfumey also in the flavor, which was interesting. Um, I could still think that uh, um, you could have slightly more acidic uh, notes to it. Uh, overall, all four of your ciders are on the sweet side with uh, differing levels of acid tannin balance. Uh, uh, 
I like this more than uh, A, um, uh, and I, in fact, uh, uh, probably, you know, I, I give a range of 36 to 42, but if I had to give a single number, I'll give it like 37, 38 on this. Um, again, I know you have declared all of these as petulant and you have probably targeted them to be petulant, but I would think that uh, it would benefit from more carbonation and even make it sparkling level carbonation would you know, bring some life to it. I did notice that the body was lower than A. Um, and again, to me, that ends up kind of being a plus point for a cider uh, as opposed to being a higher body or syrupy kind of, uh, which I don't like too much. And uh, so, so, so I like the fact that this one was a little thinner in body. So um, again, I, I, I I think this was, you know, one of the higher scoring ones. Uh, so I think on that part, we are kind of apart with, <laughs> with Brian Shar with respect to this particular uh, cider. <clears throat> All right, very good. And what did you score it? I scored it at 37 or a range would be 36 to 42. I... <clears throat> okay, very good. Yeah, you know, this, it is definitely a lighter body. Shar, I thought it was interesting. You, you pull in those lemony citrusy notes. Um, I got that too. Interesting. A little zing to it. A yeah, crispy like a, it's, like a, it's like a brightness, and it's yeah, it's like a brightness of the apple. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, I like it. It's very good. Um, since you wanted, Bill, just you know, it's a running tally of what I liked better. I like A better. It's a little more, a little more round. B for me is a little. Two, I don't say two dimensional because that's kind of insulting, but it's not as it's not as the range of flavors isn't as wide. B is a little more focused. It's a more focused, little lighter body cider. But I'll tell you what, if I got either of those in a tasting room or a four pack or whatever, I'd be well chuffed. Uh, you know what? Let's take <laughs> let's take is a break. That good? Yeah, yeah, I like them both. They're, they're great. <laughs> Um, let's take a quick break, everybody. And we're going to come right back and we're going to, we're going to do the other four or the other four. Gee, I wish the other two <laughs> ciders from bill. I didn't send eight. enough. You want me to send six next time is what I heard. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, how, about, how about eight? Yeah. Monthly. And then, um, you know, you're not going to be on every month, but <laughs> yeah, we'll still, you know, who's going to foot his UPS bill. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. It was not a cheap UPS bill. <laughs> no, I can imagine. I can oh, definitely no. imagine. All right, everybody. Thank you. On real fast is Dr. Homebrew. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for sticking around, everybody. We're going to crack open cider uh, letter C. C for cider. This is the black cap cider. Black cap, black cap cider. All right, Char. I mean, not Char, Cooper. Might as well just keep going the same same rotation, man. This is also yeah, why not? I don't yeah. want to switch it up. I like this order. I'll just I'll, I'll lead off with my foolishness, and you guys can set me straight here. There you go. I uh, had a good fill level. Nice little hiss again here. Um, and uh, yeah, I had the advantage of, of sitting down and judging all these last night. We we kind of shared the second bottles. Uh, uh, Brian graciously offered to. He's often judging the day of these things, and so. Um, but I like to judge them in advance, and I, I sat down with all these ciders last night and had a nice little uh, session with them. So, uh, and I did judge them in the same order. And sometimes judging order will affect things, but um, you know, try not to let it color things too much, and and didn't 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 go too crazy with them like like Char did today and get get too no no but I think by the end I was feeling a little a little light like oh, okay I only judged four ciders in like yeah. an hour that's nothing wrong with that right <laughs> right um this one has a nice uh uh good solid yellow color uh almost getting towards gold you know rich yellow gold light gold uh again brilliant clarity absolutely beautiful uh pours with some bubbles rising at first very few pinpoint by bubbles rising slowly as it sits there again as i'm not seeing too much it might it looks a little south of petulant but i'm you know uh, i might not knock it down i still gave it six points for appearance uh there were definitely some pinpoint bubbles in there but i had to take my glasses off to see them because i can't see shit without uh these these progressive lenses are just i'm still getting used to them the anyway it, man yeah getting old it's fun um <laughs> try it you'll like it try it <laughs> it's better than the alternative <laughs> uh bouquet aroma uh 
pleasant medium apple comes through uh, up front with a very clean permit profile apparent. Uh, it seems like it'll have a touch of sweetness and structure to it. Uh, there's no obvious alcohol or uh, estriness to it. It's not super fruity. Um, just clean apple, nice and inviting. Uh, flavor wise, a, a bit of acidity hits me at first, just kind of, it's, it's, but it's still, it's medium low. It's not really sharp alongside the apple um, with the nice medium sweetness to it. Seems right there, adds a bit of substance. Um, then again, it's, this is not just an apple juice with alcohol here. It, it's really smooth. And um, I guess I'd say it's, it is medium sweetness, but it is, it does dry off a little bit, dry off the tongue, almost leaning slightly towards semi-dry, but I think it hits firmly in the medium sweet territory. Um, but as, yeah, as it dries off the tongue, you get a little dryness and then you want another sip. Um, but the acidity kind of keeps it on your tongue too, a little bit, I think, and the sweetness combining. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the balance between those is really nice. So like, um, the apple quality that just lingers on the tongue, it's just a nice, clean, fresh tasting apple again into the aftertaste. It's maybe a little, um, lighter in body than say cider A, um, and I like it for that. It's uh, there's a little faint tannin in there, no defects. Um, yeah, just kind of medium light body, real smooth drinking uh, cider. Good balance of the, all those elements in there. Um, overall, it's very refreshing New World cider, with enough to keep it pretty interesting. Um, I guess it just it fell maybe a touch flat, and then it's just mostly just clean light apple and then a bit of acidity and that's kind of all you get it maybe needs a little little more there there i don't i don't know if you if bumping up the um the tannins just a touch might help it but you don't want to make it too crazy bold and sharp there either um but uh or even maybe a touch more alcohol might do something but uh just give it a little more of, of substance to it there and uh it's close to right could go touch touch fuller i guess uh but it's a nice job on the cider i i those are all really fine points and i was trying to find out what you what trying to think what i would do to balance it better um i still landed at a uh 39 on this i thought it was excellent uh kind of in the low end of excellent and um just a little rebalancing of that one this could be um a world-class uh new world cider i think they're all really enjoyable and drinkable and it's hard to find be a fault finder in it, but mostly just finding little balance things that you could do to it. So I couldn't push it down into the very good 30 to 37 because there's just really no flaws at all. <laughs> it's nice and easy drinking. So 39, I'll stick with that. All right. Char, you know what to do, buddy. Ask I me can... in a homebrew club again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bill, are you in a homebrew club? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not, we won't, we're not going down that path. Uh, I, I like this cider uh, appearance, six out of six. It's light gold, crystal clear, low carbonation, right, right where it's supposed to be. Uh, bouquet and aroma, uh, a little bit like the previous one. I thought the overall aroma was, was very low. I got a low apple aroma, sort of a low wine light character, but there's no off aromas. There's nothing bad about this at all. That's seven out of 10 for the aroma uh, flavor. Initially, the flavor is low apple, followed by medium acidity and medium low sweetness, uh, almost a balance. Uh, the acidity is dominant through a long finish, but not dominant in the sense that it blocks everything else out. It's just, to me, it's a little, it's balanced a little toward acidity. Uh, low carbonation, low body, 16 out of 24. Uh, overall impression, six for a total of 35. Uh, I really enjoyed this cider. It's, it's balanced, when I say it's balanced toward acid, doesn't mean that it's ripping your face off like a Cantillon. Uh, it means if you're talking about, you know, the needle is at zero and it's going a little bit toward acid, that's, that's where you're at. So it's the, the balance is a little toward acid. That's, that's all I'm saying. Uh, there, a little bit more complexity might be welcome, but again, I'm going to continue drinking this as uh, Herendu talks about it. So, uh, uh, that means it must be, it's good enough for me to keep drinking. So it's pretty good. Need some pH strips here. Mm, it's not a bad idea. 
All right. Harindu. All right. So uh, for me, I think first with the appearance, again, beautiful appearance, a little more darker than the second one, but not as, uh, as golden darker as the first one. Uh, on the aroma, I got a little bit of hay and earth, earthiness kind of. And actually, I think neither of you got this. And I'm kind of uh, also on the flavor and in aroma, but I get slight dank almost like a ripe fruit, almost oh. jackfruit kind of aroma. Hmm. Uh, and then when I get into flavor, I get more of it kind of, maybe once I'm already biased with my <laughs> aromatics. Uh, so I get like tropical fruity apricot, almost peach kind of flavor in that, uh, um, uh, in, in, you know, in, in the flavor and uh, I kind of noted that same as what Branshar was saying that acidity is higher than both A and B, which is again, for me personally, it's, it's a nice thing. Uh, tannins are very low, um, slightly flabby, but uh, that is uh, probably same as others because I would probably prefer to have more acidity and more carbonation on this, though this one has more acidity than A and B, as I said. Uh, so, but for me, it is still a little bit on the sweeter side. I scored it at 35. <clears throat> and the main thing I would say is that uh, I kind of feel that the flavor has a little bit of artificial fruitiness to it. And I don't know where that comes from. Maybe Bill will <laughs> tell us the secret uh, if, if, if there is. Uh, uh, and then again, Overall, I think that more carbonation and more acidity, acidity would uh, probably help this a little more, but it is definitely more acidic than, the, than both the previous ones. Uh, overall, I think it's a very, again, all of your ciders are very enjoyable, drinkable, quaffable on any given day, on a hot summer day especially. Uh, so not to take anything away from that, just, just like nitpicking minor things <laughs> to, I recommend B cider B for the hottest summer days. That that would be the right one for that. Cider A is probably more of a spring cider, but uh, this one, yeah, I definitely would increase that the carbonation a little bit too. I agree with that, Harindu. And may, I don't know. I would personally maybe back off the acidity a little bit and increase the carbonation because that's going to increase the impression of the uh, of acid. Just my impression. Yeah, I think carbonic bite from uh, CO two does the same thing as uh, as uh, fruit acidity. What do you get, JP? You get that dank tropical? I didn't really get that. Um, I, you know what? I get like um, canned pineapple. That's the tropical that I get. And, you know, canned not in a bad way, but, you know, sometimes canned pineapple is sort of, it's not, the acidity of the pineapple's gone and the sweetness of the pineapple sort of accentuated and sort of like a, a one or two dimensional flavor, right? Um, that's That's the... The pineapple, that's the tropical that I get from that in combination with the different apple. I think that probably is more accurate than whatever I was trying to say. I think that now that you said it, I kind of get that more. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> hey, man, you're welcome. Um, it, it's, it's almost, I, it's, I feel like I can like, like decide or see the color of the, of the apple in my brain. Like the, for me, like the meat of the apple for this one is like, the, like sometimes it's like a yellow skin, you know, it's not like pure white. It's like a little, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, Harinda, did you give it a score? Yeah, I did give it a 35 range of 33 to 37. Yeah. Yeah. You're close with Brian there, but we're not far off in a competition. We'd be just fine. And we would sort this out. I like this one a lot as well. But yeah, I think the guys are right. It needs a little fine tune. It needs to just be elevated a little uh, clean up a little bit on the palate. You know, it's a little sweet. It kind of hangs a little bit, but those darker apple flavors are on all your ciders. Maybe not B, because that's not didn't really have those darker apple flavors. But a little bit. Your flavors for your apples are so round. There's a lot of focus there. I like that. It's very good. It's very hard to do. I've made cider one time, and it was <laughs> it was a challenge. But all right, let's do the last one. Wow. I like them round. I like round apples. I mean, round oh. apples are the best kind. Cider D. Okay, here we go. Green cap <laughs> cider. Are we ready? Um, 
has a nice fill level. This one's a little, a little higher, but that's okay. Nice hiss uh, on opening. All these had a nice hiss, but then sometimes when you poured some of them, it's like it just goes whoosh and gone. And then like you see just tiny bubbles. Might need to get one of those glasses that has the etching in the bottom to, to enjoy mm. these properly so that it, it nucleates on those. Um, yeah, so again, that, that head just comes up, fades down. Lightish yellow and again, brilliantly clear. Whatever you're using for finding on these, if anything, or just aging, uh, I want to know so I can make a cider like this sometime. <laughs> Carbonation level uh, does appear petulant. It does have some little bubbles rising. Um, just pinpoint. Uh, maybe should be a bit more. They're kind of stopping at times as well as it sat there. But uh, oh, five out of six for appearance. It's just the only one I did that to just because like, the bubble stopped rising. I don't know. It's not petulant. Take a point off. Sorry. <clears throat> bouquet aroma um and this one i'm getting kind of a bruised fruit quality uh medium low somewhat mealy apple expression uh low but clean yeast expression a little a little more characterful than some new world ciders um just a touch white wine like in character and a, i i felt like i got a bit of uh a diacetyl in this one barely there just slightly detectable a little light artificial butter but i was kind of digging for some flavor some aromas in this one to get at what it was it's it's only faint and it's not enough to offend anyone except maybe doc who has the most diastole sensitive nose i've ever met but uh yeah. anyway um flavor wise uh medium low apple with a semi-sweet finish and a, a slightly odd impression any other fruit here a lot, like a faint uh, banana light coming in. Um, not rotten fruit, but like bruised fruit, bruised apple skin. Um, apricot like. There's some other stuff in here that's just some of the fruit expression. There's a lot more esters in here than the other ciders. Um, the acidity is medium low with a medium low tannins to balance. Um, a bit of that odd fruitiness just lingers into the aftertaste. Carbonation wise, it's almost still, um, but it leaves a faint impression of some light little bubbliness. It doesn't even really off your tongue that much. You don't feel the bubbles kind of popping at all. Uh, it's just kind of there, but it's not dead. It's lightly, lightly petulant, I guess, almost still. Uh, medium light body. Um, so yeah, overall, it's a fairly clean drinking cider, just a bit less fresh tasting apple note and therefore um, a bit less smoothly drinkable than hoped. Uh, still seems like a well-crafted cider. Um, I might, if I had to guess, I'd say you could have had some bruised fruit in there or it could be a yeast character that's poking through some of these interesting esters that I'm getting. Um, try different yeast, maybe a bit less characterful and or uh, just kicks off a bit less of A, that odd fruit characters or and B, any diacetyl, clean that up uh, as well. Um, but it's, I, I'm struggling with that. It, it, it's, it's not screaming artificial butter to me. Now, when I tasted it last night, I felt like I got it. When I first tasted it and smelled it today, I felt like I got it just a tiny touch. But it's at that point where the apples and everything else is there. And there's a fair amount else that's there are kind of covering it up. So I see what you mean. It's like bubble. It's like like a like a dolphin. I am, yeah, and in it's and like, out of the water. Uh, you know? Yeah, like, uh, there's sort like, of then splash. It's gone. Oh my god, there it is again. Look, it's breaching. <laughs> hey, it's down again. There she is, Flipper. Hello. Oh wait, no, she's gone. Um, <laughs> I don't think this, that's really what it is, but I think there are a couple flavors there combining to present as that. Yeah, but it's guys, it's what's called like excitement. It. You should enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Excitement. Yes. Um, so yeah, um, it's it's clean and it, it's a pretty cider. Uh, you definitely want to increase the carbonation level there uh, just a bit to give it right more of that tingly kind of maybe sharper 
going towards the more bright lemony side of things or the crisp fresh apple side of things you know these are all pretty fine points um you know it's it's, al- it's almost tastes like it's aged on like a wine barrel yeah almost or like has a, a little something else going getting loose in the fermentation like more i don't know herindu can tell us more about the malolactic thing and all of that stuff yeah. um but it's not it's not expressing like tartly it's it's you know it's more on the dull side and with a lot of interesting fruitiness to it so mm-hmm. again fine points I, I landed in still in in the kind of the middle point of very good character to me i landed at a 34 i thought it was very drinkable still and uh yeah what i'm getting i'm still struggling to get at it maybe these guys will ping it on the head like the other one so yeah um i'll let uh brian and and Herendu have their say here and and jp of course yeah i already <laughs> did go shark go for it all right so this is cider d uh appearance six out of six color is light gold crystal clear very low carbonation uh bouquet and aroma what's interesting is my notes are my notes are from about an, a couple hours ago, hour and a half ago. Uh, low apple, low uh, oak slash vanilla, no off aromas. But I, I can't get the oak now. There's going to be a tiny bit of just be some vanilla, but it's not quite as prominent to me as it had been. And that's interesting because usually when you have a, a aroma like that, it gets more prominent as the beverage warms rather than less. I could be but talked into a little bit there. of oak here. Yeah, yeah. could be talked but into it, that. It's, it's still there. So 7 out of 10. Uh, flavor, initially, the uh, impression was low apple and medium low acidity with uh, medium low sweetness that balances. Uh, get me, I got, my notes are medium to low tannin is pleasant and adds complexity. I'm going back here. It's not, yeah, there's still, there's, there's not quite as much as there was when it was colder, I think, but it's still there. No off flavors. The aftertaste is long and balanced, 19 out of 24. Uh, I really like this cider. I think it's complex and interesting. I scored it a 40, kind of going back and thinking about cider A. I think that I might, if I were to go back from scratch, I might rejigger the scores a little bit and put A ahead of D, but I still like D quite a bit. So rather than second guess myself some more, probably Herendu should talk. <laughs> Needs the tie break for us here, I think. Yeah. No, we do we have to go through the whole thing because I think <clears throat> we are somewhat on a different end of the spectrum here. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, going to cider D. Um, uh, again, amazing appearance, clarity, uh, color, carbonation, uh, even. I poured a while back. I see persistence in uh, head here a little bit. Uh, nice uh, uh, sheeting and uh, bubbles on the ring, kind of on the cup. Uh, appearance is awesome. Uh, going to the aromatics, uh, uh, I got a little bit of grassy, earthy, which is not a bad thing. I'm just saying that that's that's what I got. It, it's not a negative thing. Now that you say it, I, that's, that's something I was tasting and I wasn't thinking about. I, now that you said, definitely get the grassy. Now that you, you said the word and I'm like, aha. <laughs> yeah. And when I poured it initially, I don't get it anymore right now, but I did get a little bit of sulfur up front and which is, which is very common in ciders, especially when you pour it. Uh, that might again be something that Brian Cooper was saying like, Bruce fruit or something. It's just a little kind of weird aromatics that uh, uh, right now I don't get it anymore because I think it dissipates uh, pretty pretty quickly. Like an H2S, uh, a little hydrogen yeah, sulfide. Yeah, yeah, it's just, hmm. uh, yeah, and I do get oak. Uh, I mean, it, it's really a very smooth, honestly, uh, uh, probably one of the best, uh, most balanced uh, and uh, uh, I'm sorry if I just quoted it lower. Uh, I do get floral notes uh, in the aroma as well as in the in the flavor. I get slight minty notes, like you know, mm-hmm. very mild in, in the flavor, not in the aroma. Uh, I do not get the you know the diacetyl as much uh, as Brian, sorry, Cooper is getting. Uh, 
but uh, there is a little slickness to it. So, I mean, that, that could be it, but it's not, it's not uh, uh, offensive to me. I, I think it's not something that I would take points for. Uh, very easy drinking. Um, maybe if anything that is negative about this would be that perfuminess and the flavor part of it, which is in a way kind of, you know, could be, could be balancing out the other stuff. So, and my score is 37. And again, my same, same comment would be more acidity and more carbonic bite uh, would be nice to kind of make it, you know, when you have that, it just livens up cider a lot. It makes it just alive, you know, it just makes it uh, refreshing, very easy, you know, more drinkable than what it already is. So yeah, I know you, you call them all petulant, but you know, why not make them sparkling? <laughs> it's what I'm mm. Okay. All right. That makes sense. <clears throat> okay. Wow. We did it. What? <laughs> we went through bill. Yeah. Let's go through, let's go through the cider. <clears throat> um, in case you didn't know by now, this is gonna be a long show. Uh, but we'll wrap up soon. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to uh, pour all four of them into little cups, too. I got a got sample all, set here. Yeah, I got them all right here. Uh, Bill, t take us through your ciders, please. Well, before we do it, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. What was everyone's favorite? Ah, I think mine was A. Mine was A. Let me run through. Real mine, mine, score notwithstanding, mine was A. Wow. Okay. I'm being, I'm going to be the contrarian, obviously with a different palette. <laughs> so mine was a, a, a short, a kind of a flip between B and D, probably B. Yeah. yeah I, I can make a strong case for C also, but I think A for me was the most enjoyable. So this cider is what I refer to as my being there. Being there is actually a Peter Sellers movie. I name a lot of my things after some Peter Seller stuff, so it's a great movie. Um, and I do what I call the being there variant. The variant is, is the juice is the same on all this stuff. The recipe is pretty much the same for all four of these things. What? The, the main, juice is the same? The juice is the same for all four of these things. The main difference on this, besides maybe I rushed some of the carbonation around the end of it, trying to get the stuff out to you guys. <laughs> I think oh, that's why 05 is not probably as high, or the D, which is actually US 05. Hmm. Um, uh, it was actually not as carbonated, I think, because I, I, I thought what, as I drank through, I was like, yeah, it's not as carbonated as the rest of those. But so D is USO five. Uh, C is actually Lutra done at a pseudo logger temperature around 68, 70 degrees. B is actually Cota de Blanc, which is a wine yeast. Hmm. And then A was a Horndale, uh, Quick. yeast. And actually, that one's also probably one of the oldest ones. That one I've had for a few months, and I just shot that off with, with everyone. The other, the other three, uh, the the B, the B, the C, and the D, were all ones that were made a little bit in the last few months and stuff. So they're a little bit younger. I like that C. It's it is it's very bright and yeah. and um, assertive. So, yeah. so let me let me understand this right. So you did not actually take the same juice and split it into four batches. This is four different juices with four different yeasts. Yeah. So the, yeah. The, the fruits were the same, but it's still a different juice. Well, I'll even blow your mind more. This is all store-bought apple juice. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's Don't nice tell to me know. Costco. You can, you can make really good, really good cider with store-bought apple juice. What, what kind Bill, of Bill, Bill, what was brand? The, before I get too far from this, what was the yeast on A? Hmm. A was uh, the Horndale. It's a Kvike yeast, also I, done at a... Wow. Lower temperature. So typically uh, I have a room in my house that just sits great at that 68 to 70 degree temperature. Okay. And so uh, just doing that kind of pseudo lagering concept with it. Well, that's like the first Kvike thing I've had that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Ruthless. Uh, what brand of juice <laughs> did you, I mean, what is what... Uh, some, mostly just... it's Aldi brand. Uh, sometimes okay. it's Kroger brand, but yeah, it's uh Really? Yeah. Now there is a little difference between Aldi Brown and, Kro and Kroger Brand, which could have made a slight difference. Uh, the Citric, they have more vitamin C in the Kroger Brand, which has so that could add a little bit more acidity to it. But nothing that I've really normally have noticed. Um, I would never have known. I would never have known that. Those are that is those yeasts and the way that you handle them 
really accentuated a lot of those flavors. Yeah. Well, and one of the reasons I did is for me, I can make beer, I can make mead. Apple juice is a lot cheaper. Yeah. And so if I want to experiment, and again, I'm doing these in five gallon batches, but I, I just, you know, do it and I try it and I'm learning on it. And then, you know, taking that experience, if I want to enhance it with spices or whether I want to do fruits and stuff, the yeast can make a difference. Like the 05, I have, I'm doing something weird with it because I'm like, I like how that one just seems more mellow in a way where the the Cote de Blanc and the Lutra to me kept more of a little of the acidity, more of the clarity to it too. Yeah. Um, but but uh, I mean, I would yeah. like to still kind of point out, right? I mean, that even though it might be store brought juice from the same. And we lost him. No, he's gone. <laughs> Justin, he was going to say, I was going to ask you, Bill, which one is your favorite? You, you don't have to listen to us, but what do you, you like? You know, I, I'm, of course, I, I appreciate some of everything, um, but to me, I've always liked my Lutra one. Uh, this is actually my second batch of a Lutra one, which is what which I serve to you guys, but I've done one which was done pretty well. The Cote de Blanc, I also like a lot. It just kind of gives that more whiny flavor to it, so it has a yeah. A sharper, so, a sharperness to it. Lutra is this, is C, right? Is C, yes. And and Cote de Blanc is B. Is B, yes. Yeah. I'm mixing okay. C and D, and I really yeah. like it. And so to give you guys, Cooper's going to blend all of them together before we're done. I already did <laughs> last night, and I have <laughs> tasting notes for it. Yeah. And this is well, my that's... compare and contrast sheet that I did at the end of the night last night. And then I'll, then I'll like, shut up, and we can get to that. Yeah, yeah but that's okay. To give you guys an idea, like the Cote de Blanc got a 39 at uh, Colorado State Fair, got a wow. 30, got a 39 at uh, Mayfair. Jeez. Um, Good. The uh, let's see here. The 05 has only hit one competition, Hot and Humid, got a 38 there. Um, <clears throat> let's see. The, the Lutra one here has not actually gone anywhere yet. And of course, the Horndale has been all over the place in scores, mm. um, all the way up back in February at a 42. A month later, got a 32.5. Normally stays in the 30s. Unfortunately, there was one that got a 29.5 on that one. But uh, <laughs> you never know what they've done with the bottles or anything else. So, <laughs> you know, but, you know, that's uh, age makes a difference to me. That Horndale one, I didn't think aged as well. So I was really surprised that you guys liked it as much as you did that a one. Because mm -hmm. to me, as it aged, it kind of, as I said, that one's one of the oldest ones of them kind of had a weird flavor to it. Haredu, what were you going to say before you dropped out? You were about to drop some knowledge on us. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I was just going to say that, I mean, it's not quite accurate to say that these are same juice because even though they were bought from the same store at different times, they could be different batches with different blends of apples and all that. So some of the differences, it's not all coming from East. It's, it could be from the base juice itself, right? Yeah, I mean, again, those, I mean, there are 100% juice things, but you're right. There could be some variations to it. But, you know, I know when I drink store bought apple juice from the same store, bottle one typically tastes the same as bottle two does. I mean, there could be some different things on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And again, even then, there's still different things. You know, was I two degrees higher when I ferment it and, and stuff, you know, uh, than I did last time? Even though I have a room which is pretty good, it's not temperature controlled. Um, but the yeast is, you know, as I said, makes a Especially you got an ale yeast, you got a wine yeast, and you got two Kavike yeast ones here. Um, yeah. So the starting gravity and the finishing gravities were the same on all of them, or there was mm -hmm. difference on that too? Uh, they were very close. They might be off like by a 0 0.01 point or 0 0.02 point or something like that. Mm -hmm. So once I feel like the fermentation stopped at a lower percentage, yeah, I do it. And then I'll back sweeten. I back sweeten them all the exact same way. And, and so, yeah, that, that's actually a question <laughs> how many points do you put back with back splitting and is it is it raw juice uh, or what what do you use for it's, it's i use raw juice so typically i'll throw a little bit of extra white sugar in to get the alcohol up higher to make some of that number up but yeah unfortunately you know I, my math is not the greatest i know what my starting gravity is my end gravity is and then i throw some juice in there and of course <laughs> that changes your abv in there somewhat mm, but sure but, but yeah, so. what you're really gunning for. You don't, you're not really worried about the final, the finishing gravity. I mean, as long as, I mean, who, okay. If, is it a good thing? 
do you or is it you know do you get hot now with me the stuff you have a problem sometimes with heat and the fusels and stuff if it drinks well whether it's a three percent or a four percent if it tastes well and balanced i mean so yeah, back sweet- I mean, <laughs> Back sweetening is after uh, racking it off and stabilizing it, or do you do stabilize it? it and back sweeten? What are you clarifying with? <laughs> uh, Sparkerwood. Yeah, nice. And then, how do you treat your yeast? Um, I, I guess do you have some some are dry yeast, some are liquid yeast in this? Um, so yeah, so the Kvike, of course, is going to be liquid yeast. The uh, wine and the ale yeast O five, of course, is dry yeast. Um, Get, that would make a difference too. My, my with Kvike, I'm going to throw a lot more nutrients in there um, to get it going. Uh, so, but yeah, I, I, a lot of times up up front yeast nutrients to it all. So, are you doing starters? Or just throwing in a lot of dry yeast. I, I just, I just and... dry. You know, it's I know a lot of people. T- well, no, a lot, a lot of people say, hey, uh, you know, you need to do starters. Dry yeast today. The modern dry yeast. I don't think you need to do starters. That's my own personal opinion. Uh, I know other people disagree with it, um, but do you hydrate it or use any go firm or anything like that in it or no? I just feel good about use, yeast nutrients in it and it starts going. Cool. Am, pectic uh, enzymes. Do you use pectic enzymes for uh, pre? Not, pre- not in this instance. Uh, I do use pectic enzyme for certain things, especially if I do fruit additions. Like if I was doing like a, a cherry something or a, something like that, I may use pectic enzymes to help pull that out. Um, but yeah, in regards of just doing store bought apple juice, no. So so I, I don't know I, I don't know if you answered that, but how many gravity points do you add with back sweetening? Or, or you said you don't know. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't measure that part of it because at okay. the end of the day, I don't care because it's not fermenting out, and it's not about the math. It's about perceive what you. So perceive. so you you add a little, you taste it. You add a little, you taste it until you think it's good. Yeah, and and and, and my process actually for this it's the same because I got the math right for how I want, you know, if I get down low enough, I throw it back in um, and it works out pretty well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I made a mistake before we're trying to do the math as so I added back sweetness. What did it, you know, you know, what's, what's the final graph? It's about perceived because acidity and everything else will, it's, it's about balance and, and that aspect right. of it. So, yeah. Uh, let's, uh, take, let's take a final break here. Hold on. I hate to, to break up the combo, but we need to take one more break. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up with Bill here. Hang on. Dr. Homebrew, don't go anywhere. Uh, all right, Bill, who is Matthew? Matthew Harold. He's he's watching us and he's drinking all the four ciders. So, uh, math, <laughs> so besides me being part of the, and actually, I love to actually talk about this part of this. I'm also part of what's referred to as the Master Homebrew Program. Uh, it's a national um, group of... <laughs> competitive home brewers where we've gamified the concept of competing in competitions and trying different styles and stuff. Matthew is the president of the master homebrew, uh, master homebrew program. And I actually the vice president of master homebrew program. Yeah. We, and so and we I, had him on the show a few, few shows back. So uh, yeah. listen back to that one. And, and I'm really interested in that master homebrewing program too. That sounds really cool and what he's doing. So you're, I was going to ask you, Bill, you're tracked in this whole uh, competitive homebrewing Facebook group thing and all of that. Yeah. Hey, uh, congratulations on the Glencap uh, Best Intro third place behind nice. me. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Teach me, master. What did so, I do yeah. wrong? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't taste yours, so I don't know. I, I wasn't there judging. I, 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 I was just happy to uh, score um, this that's... year on it. It actually got two placements, and I I had a Perry and a, a fruit uh, cider that placed at the Glencap and. Oh wow! I, I'm just blown away. Oh, wow. Okay, I I only know about Perry because that was in the same category as me. But yeah. Yeah, All I right. also got second place. In, I got second place in uh, the fruit the fruit ciders. Nice. I gotta love well. homebrew trash talk. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay. stand in line behind me, buddy, because I got second place and you got uh, third. Well, you know what? It's great because you know what? I love. It. I mean, part of the master homebrew program. I love cheering along all these other guys and stuff too. It's like. Uh, you, Peach State Brew Off. Uh, I'm I'm at the actual award ceremony, and we have all these other people from Texas and stuff. And I'm clapping, and everyone's giving me a funny look. At, Why the heck that guy clapped? That guy's an out of state person who just won. I'm like, mm. I know that guy. We work together. I'm like Thor, you know, in uh, the Ragnarok movie. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's it, it's funny because like you know, it, it, the craft brewers like to say you know there's it's 99 asshole free or whatever, and I think for competition wise 
whenever you go to like a GABF and you see these, you know, brewers win and there is still a little bit of competition there because <laughs> they are competing for a market. And as much as everyone likes to like each other, their brands are still, you know, there's, there's some tension there. There's some stress there with homebrew. Huh. It's, it's not, it's, it's not yeah. there. Cause it's and like, honestly, yeah. you know what I mean? I like to see you win and it does, it literally no sweat off my, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter if I, I just, you know, it's honestly, I feel better. Cause I want to, I want to compete with good pe people who brew good stuff. Yeah. I wanted that accomplishment. If I just happen to win everything. Eh. So I mean, honestly, I mean, there's people like in Mead. I got uh, Matthew Mead this year. Last year was Matthew Williamson and going back and forth who wins best of shows on things. It's great. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or you're like, you're wandering around with, with Pavel or somebody and sipping ciders on club night. And then two nights later, he wins a bunch of awards. And you're like, yeah, I think I had that cider, man. <laughs> yeah. So I, I blended B and C with a little bit of a bill. Have mm -hmm. you gone through and like blended all these two? Do you do that as well? Or are you kind of like, well, here it is here. It's bottled. I don't really care anymore. Well, the problem is I don't like opening too many bottles by myself. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll, with a couple of homebrew club meetings where I've taken these and I've taken two or three of them and like, hey, guys, yeast experiment, try it, you know. So I, I like doing that stuff, trying to use it as educational for other people, too. Um, and so you have it, to with five gallons each. <laughs> so well, this some is goes all... to competitions and some go to oh, clubs. Right, right, yeah. right. And, and this cheap. is all cake, cake carbonated, right? they're all any... k carbonated so yeah <laughs> it's, it's yeah it's fairly cheap and easy to, very easy to make if, if anyone out there is just listen what is this home brewing thing and just listen mm -hmm. to this randomly make a cider they're actually pretty easy to make and so is, uh, is there a reason that you do petulant versus uh sparkling or well uh, <laughs> just i through the bottling process i feel like i would have lost carbonation that would come back to petulant i just never have been great at for me, the idea of sparkling is champagne level. Now, could it be a higher level of petulant? Yes, I could probably do better at that. I think in this case here, sometimes I'm rushing it a little bit more than I should. Because um, I do like this. I mean, to me, I, what you said was right. I like carbonating to get my acidity rather than adding other kind of acids in there. Um, and But yeah, sparkling, I've just never had successfully done that. And the times I've successfully done it, it's been by mistake. Uh, <laughs> oops it's champagne like <laughs> here we go you know yeah. bill one of the things you said earlier that i i think was kind of worth touching on again was you you got this juice from aldi because out east or out west we don't have a lot of aldi just yet but it's starting to come out here like in fresno there's getting to be some aldi's now and it's like a it's like a german grocery chain they've had it out east like my brother lives out in dc and they've had it out there for forever but it's starting to make its way out here. And if you can get, if that's an easy way to get a bunch of different varietals of apple juice and just put some cider in, or put some, some yeast in, you know, we had a guy in our club, you know, 15 years ago, win best of show at a small comp with uh, a jug of apple juice. He got at the farmer's market, put some, some yeast in, waited for like three weeks and then bottled it <laughs> yeah. it's it's one of the simplest things to do and if you have the ability to go to a grocery store that has like a bunch of different you know organic apple juice that doesn't have the 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 sulfites and stuff to, to stop fermentation of yeast you can really play around yeah. with some great experiments and do some blending and stuff and it's going to cost you a fraction of normal cider making or of brewing yeah Right. I mean, I mean, here you can get Trader Joe's juice or you can go to Costco. Oh, no. Uh, I, I use Costco Golden. juice and made Costco. ice cider with it. Really? Co one. Costco uh, juice? Costco juice is uh, huh. not bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot. And don't forget, a lot of these store-bought apple juice, those name brands, are the same companies that make Mott's yeah. or other things like that. They just brand no, that's it differently. Right. It's just cheaper. Um, yeah. So, yeah, as you said, there, there's no chemicals in it. Do it. Uh, I'm in G North Georgia. A little bit north of me, there are huge apple orchards and stuff. So I, I can get natural, you know, that natural cider stuff. Funny thing is, anytime I've used like the more expensive like cider I bought from a uh, there, they never score well in competitions. Mm. The uh, store bought uh, cheaper uh, apple juice goes uh, far better. Now, note I've made some that that's taste wonderful. I mean, and and that's the thing about judging. I mean, everyone has different taste buds. People like these different things. Um, one of my favorite ciders has never made over a thirty. So, so, Bill, I, I, I'll, I'll separate that out a little bit. Uh, 
it's like if you if you're going to make english or french cider that's where the things get tricky so new world mm-hmm. cider yeah you could get get away with store store brought juice but when you start getting into tannic and bitter uh, apples you know uh, sharp you know <clears throat> and and all the funky fermentation issues stuff yeah, that you yeah. do with the uh, english and french cider so that that's kind of where things separate out but i think for a new world cider i think store brought apples apple juice would be fine yeah <clears throat> and like with, with english ciders it's a lot about some of the tannins and stuff you can do with it the french one's one i'm trying to figure out myself uh because again part of the master homebrew program is trying new sub styles so for me to get one of my cool scores i want i need to score real well in a french thing so i'm starting to play around with you know the the malto uh i'm gonna say it wrong the maltic acid or whatever you have to do for it and malolactic fermentation thank you yeah mm. so yeah I need, I need to play with that kind of scientific stuff that scares me because i'm just a cave brewer <laughs> Yeah, I've got the blend here too. I like, I just blended all four and I like the, it kind of broadens out everything and it just makes it interesting, but it's, it's, you know, um, it kind of just smooths everything out and it doesn't have, you know, it has a little of the color of the A and has, it doesn't have the odd prettiness that I got in the D to me, but it just like smooths everything out and just kind of, everything's kind of medium, sweetness, medium, you know, everything, the, the, the aftertaste lingers really long and it's just so much different different stuff going on in there no off flavors it's a smooth drinker it's, it's the wild. best of four worlds somehow <laughs> best of four worlds that's right yeah that's cool bill you know hey man i really appreciate you sharing this with us i know you <laughs> send you send us all this uh all this stuff and you know plus your time and everything but uh, it was fascinating it was great to talk to you about it and uh to hear your process i i think we're all blown away that these were just store bought and the yeast you picked out, I think are really great. Um, I think they, they, they each did something very, very unique with the apple character and you could really uh, take a lot away from that. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I saw that. if I had these at a craft beer bar, I would, I would order one of these, you know, for sure. Absolutely. I would not, I would not upset with any of them. I mean, even yeah. D I didn't really like D that much, but I would still drink it. Like, yeah. Okay. It's great. Yeah. And again, it's one of those things like I, one of the homebrew clubs I brought it to, I gave them the Cote de Blanc and the 05, and everyone liked the 05 better. And except for me, who I wanted the more acidity of the Cote de Blanc kind of thing, <laughs> you know. So, but they were like, man, it's like almost caramelly, apple flavor they got out of it kind of thing is what they were saying. It that's- had a lot of interesting flavors in it. I could see why someone was like, wow, that's that's a really flavorful cider. It's it's yeah. interesting. So, so no me. tropical fruits were added to C, to According no, tra- I mean, basically it's apple juice. There's a little bit of white sugar that I've added to it to get the ABV up before I back sweeten it some. But beyond that, do you take the apple juice and add water, or is it just straight up apple juice? Five gallons of apple juice. It's five gallons of apple juice. Technically, yeah. I'll, here you go. I'll tell you guys a secret. It's four gallons of apple juice, a couple cu- a couple cups of white sugar, and back sweeten with one gallon of apple juice. Okay. All wow. Right. That's what that recipe is. Wow. And anyone can make that kind of cider here. I mean, it, it metals too. I mean, it's, and I just gave you one of my biggest secrets. <laughs> do, you treat, bit of sugar? do you treat the, uh, the back sweetened juice with anything? No. Cider? Uh, well, don't forget. It's already been stabilized. It's clean coming out of that bottle. Yeah. yeah so, so it's clean out of that bottle. So you stabilize, which again, already has some of the metabasulfite uh, and potassium sorbates and all that stuff there in it. So, yeah, you're not going to get anything from the clean bottles into that. Okay, interesting. Cool. Well, very cool. Do we have anything left for Bill, or is that it? Are we done with Bill? I just well, think this was a lot of fun. Wish him a lot of wins at future competitions. Obviously, yeah. you're doing something right. That's right. <laughs> Make that uh, master homebrewer thing. Yeah. Yeah, Bill. Do you have anything? Uh, anything else for for the you other? Know, or me, I mean, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, no, I think this was great. Um, I would still like to get, you know, as I said, Matthew Harold, and you know, we love to talk a little bit more about the Master Homebrew program. I think the few times you've had us, we've just touched it and not really gone into the details. So it'd be great maybe to get another kind of shoot some stuff off to you and maybe have a bigger conversation on that. Absolutely, we'll taste cool. anything. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess if that's it, we're gonna get out of here, everybody. Thank but you first. Very much. Yes. If somebody wants to send us a, a cider, you, Brian, every, every fucking show, every single show, if you want to be on the show, thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you would like your beer on this show, 
Email Brian at thebrewingnetwork.com. And he will get back to you and he'll get you on the show and he'll get you plugged in, scheduled on, and we will talk to you. We'll drink your beer or your cider or your kombucha or your hard tea. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck people are. Hard seltzer. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. We'll do anything. I'm a meat judge now. I made meat judge. That's right. Yeah. I've heard Scored that okay. before. Yeah. yeah. On the men's room bathroom wall. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.